my name is Markus Lehtonen, and I'm going to talk about talk a bit about uh, building and maintaining RPM packages in uh, JIT repositories using JIT build package tool. A short intro. So I'm working for the Intel op uh, Open Source Technology Center, Finland office, and one of my duties has have been has been. Uh, participating in the Tizen project, which uh, uh, of developments of which this presentation contains. Uh, outline of my talk: First, I'm going to represent your problem that we or I found. Then, shortly talk about the Debian and the JIT build package tool there. Uh, then present our solution to the problem, uh, JIT build package RPM toolset and deep, a little bit, uh, do a little bit deeper dive there, and then demo the tools, then talk about shortly about a future development, what I have in, have in mind, and if I have time, I, uh, I can shortly talk about the uh, build setup, which we have in Tizen. First, the problem. Uh, in RPM world, the package maintenance and software development, in my opinion at least, has some problems. Uh, there are so many different practices how, how packages are uh, maintained, and how the packaging meta metadata is uh, stored, uh, different practices even inside or between different developers of inside one distribution. So the tracking of history of of the packaging met metadata is easily quite error prone or haphazard. Uh, then often there is no clear super clear separation between uh, real upstream sources, uh, then local code changes, and then the packaging, packaging data. And of course, which add, what adds to the confusion is that people from different projects, uh, or uh, people with background in different projects, then when they come into a new project, they have uh, different practices brought, brought from those, for example, federal issues. And then, of course, one problem that I see is that pack packaging and releasing your, your changes can be a little bit awkward, always editing the spec file, doing the same things, adding the patches there, and, and generating the patches, and, and so on, so forth. Uh, in Debian, however, uh, they have a long history of uh, maintaining packages in different uh, version control systems and they have some good package maintenance practices as well. They have four, four uh, maintaining packages in version control system. They have many build package tools, SVM build package, HG build package for maintaining packages in Mercurial or JIT build package for JIT. And it seemed that I'd like to have something similar in the RPM world as well. And uh, JIT build package seemed to be one, one good option for that. Shortly about the JIT build package in the Debian world, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the tool set. Just quick poll. Raise your hand if you know that. Okay, there are some people, so that's good. Uh, I'm not that familiar with the tools at myself because I mainly worked on the RPM side. But but anyway, uh, JIT build package is a set of tools for maintaining and building packages in uh, Debian packages in uh, in JIT repositories. Uh, it has multiple. Uh, separate command line tools 
uh, for uh, importing Debian packages to JIT to like initialize a project, then uh, cloning and updating uh, repositories which are maintained by uh, by or with with the JIT build package tool. Then it's it has it has got tools for importing upstream released up, upstream source tarballs into into a JIT repository. Then uh, building builder tool, of course, for help helping building packages out of the JIT, and then change log management tool as well. And uh, all in all, the Debian tools uh, help in keeping the packaging consistent, at least in my my how I I see it. That helps to keep consistent branch naming JIT then consistent uh, tag naming and and tagging of releases helps in patch ma management importing patches to your to JIT and then generating patches out of out of there then helps also handling upstream sources so importing new upstream versions and and keeping everything in shape and then it's also uh, in integrated with the pristine tar tool which can be used for getting pristine like bit bitwise identical tarballs or release tarballs out of out of jit by the way if you have any questions or uh, i explain something in an odd way, please just interrupt and ask. So all in all, JIT build package, how we saw it in Tizen, it provided an easier and more, or helped to get, uh, helped for easier and more consistent development and package maintenance. Uh, simple in, in a sense that all packaging and sources are stored in JIT. It's easy to track history and build any build any released version of the of the package. It also helps in helps developers uh, packaging their local source code changes and help helps them test that the packaging is correct and also helps in submitting their changes either directly to remote JIT repository or or for review in in mailing lists or or Jared, for example, and then it helps and ma helps maintainers to release their software as well. To, for example, change log management and tagging are good. Release tagging are good examples of that. And uh, in my opinion, there's that also the consistency makes it also a lot easier to employ automatic building and test machinery across the distribution if if uh, all or most of the packages are maintained with one one tool or few tools so uh, I must excuse my artistical capabilities but here is how I see that JIT build package uh, fits in in the development process. So it mostly helps packaging the stuff, but also helps in the helps in develop helps developers testing and also helps in in releasing the changes. Then to our solution, uh JIT build package RPM. Uh, we decided to go this way because we had two constraints. Uh, we had to use JIT, and then we were tied to RPM as well. Uh, however, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel again, and thus decided to try to extend the uh, existing Debian tool tool set uh, to support 
RPM packaging as well. And as a result, uh, we ended up implementing experimental support for RPM and I call it JIT build package RPM suit. Uh, everything I present here is al already publicly available uh, and the target in the long term is to is to get everything upstreamed into the Debian JIT, JIT build package. Uh, goals in in this e exercise were uh, basically support all the uh, features that the Debian uh, tools that has uh, reuse code as much as possible from the Debian side and also try to like enhance the code and contribute back. Then one of my goals was to try to be distribution agnostic in the sense that you could use the uh, tool set for developing in any RPM environment, OpenSUSE, Tizen, uh, Fedora, Mandriva, whatever. So also because of that, uh, it requires for the tool set to be flexible for different different development practices and uh, and back-end back -end infrastructures so to support the different workflows and different kinds of maintenance maintenance models of packages and also one one goal was to help or in a, to be able to do cross rpm distribution development so that that was also important for Tizen so that you could for example use uh, Fedora to develop for for Tizen. Uh, the concept in, in the JIT build package RPM tool set uh, is pretty simple in general. So everything is in, is in JIT. Uh, the source code, upstream, up, upstream source code, all the packaging files so from the previous session, you remember packaging spec file, I don't, possibly a changelog file, uh, patches, uh, additional sources, license files, whatever. And then <coughs> uh, uh, and then, then the one, one thing is that we, we don't uh, have the upstream source tarball or source archive in the in the JIT though. So the source tarball is generated in, in build time from from JIT. So we don't store any big binary tarballs in JIT. And in uh, JIT build package RPM the spec file is is the central piece of like packaging information, upstream version, release version, name of the package and so on. So this tool set or suit is a set of command line, t command line tools like Debian or similar to Debian. It has fairly few dependencies, only Python 2.6. something, I guess, would be the minimum version. Then we use RPM Python for helping in parsing the parsing the spec file, and then JIT, of course, is required, like as a hard requirement. Then you can have this pristintar tool, for example, if you, if you want to use it, but it's not mandatory. The feature set is pretty comparable to, to the Debian tool, tool set, uh, JIT build package RPM, supports importing existing source RPMs into a JIT repository. Then it uh, supports cloning and pulling, or cloning and updating from remo remote repositories that are being maintained by, by JIT build package. 
uh, it also similarly uh, helps as tools for m managing upstream sources. Then, of course, helps building packages and uh, separate tool for batch, batch management. And uh, batch management is one important feature of that is that uh, it, it, all, it has automatic like update of the spec file, so it uh, puts puts all the batch tags and macros in place automatically, so you don't have you don't have to or need to edit the spec file manually. And this RPM uh, toolset integrates with, with pristine tar as well. So pristine tar is usually used in in the Debian world, but but we have used it also in in the RPM world. So so as I said earlier, oh, how many you are familiar with with pristine tar? So at least some. So it's a tool for. Uh, Importing like release tarballs into into JIT repository, so that uh, it generates uh, delta information from the uh, JIT upstream or JIT uh, release tag, and between the between the data that is actually in the tarball. Oh shit! So. Uh, as a result, with the with the pristine tar tool, you are able to check out from the JIT repository exactly the same tarball that was released in some uh, in the project website. For example, the release tarball may, might contain uh, auto tools macros or something, some additional data that is not found in the in the JIT JIT repository. So uh, now I'm going to present all the separate tools in the JIT build package RPM toolset. Uh, let's start with JIT import SRPM. The names are quite horrible. Uh, this is a tool for importing existing source RPMs into into JIT repository. So again, here's. A Final illustration of mine, trying to illustrate what happens. So first you have source RPM, upstream version 1.0 and release 9. And then you run the tool and uh, uh, it creates a JIT repository and puts there two branches. We call them upstream and packaging branches. Normally the packaging branch is normally called master, so master branch, but anyway. Uh, so it puts, uh, takes the, or finds the upstream tarball, tarball from the source RPM and commits that into the upstream branch, or contents of that into upstream branch as one commit. Uh, then it takes all the other, other files in the source RPM, so the packaging files, so to call spec file patches and, and so on, and commits them into a separate branch called called the packaging branch. So now we are somewhere here. And uh, now this illustrates the case that the tool automatically imports all the patches that it found uh, automatically on top of the source code tree as well. So what it really does is uh, takes the upstream sources, commits them to JIT, then commits the, adds the packaging files in a separate directory there, commits those in, and then imports the patches into the source tree. And uh, some features, uh, it, it has separation for native and non-native packages. More of that later, a little bit later. Then automatic patch import if you want to use that. So to get patches into the JIT, JIT tree as one one commit per patch. 
So in this case, we would have two patches, for example. And then it has an uh, option for filtering the upstream tarball, for example. Sometimes it might have some uh, source code repository metadata that you would possibly want to, want to filter out before committing it to, it to JIT and also pristine tar support. Then the next tool is uh, JIT import uh, org RPM, even more horrible name. Uh, this is a tool for importing new released upstream tarballs into, into JIT repository that is being managed with JIT build package. So this picture again tries to illustrate what happens. So now we had imported this package uh, or existing source RPM into JIT. Then we want to do a version bump to version 2.0. We have a release tarball and then with this, with this tool uh, it commits the contents of the source tarball into the upstream branch of the JIT repository and uh, tags it according, accordingly. So pretty simple. Now if you want to make a version bump, you, you, you'd basically only need to uh, rebase the packaging branch on, on top of the uh, tip of, of the upstream branch. Uh, pretty similar features to the import SRPM, so you can filter out some data, source uh, version control metadata or big test data, for example, if you don't want to have those in your JIT repository. Then pristine tar support as well, and something we mentioned about pristine tar support here is that it also supports like mangling the prefix and tarball name of the source tarball when importing it, the pristine tar. And then uh, the tool has also uh, options to help help you importing release tarballs even if you are uh, following the upstream upstream JIT project directly. So you can have like upstream JIT branch called, for example, ma mainline, and then you would have import the release tarball on top of that, and then uh, have a packaging branch in addition. Then two commands just for syncing with or getting changes from, from remote repositories. These are basically same, the same tools that that the Debian side has GBP clone and GBP pool. Uh, they're pretty simple tools. The only, the, well, the benefit of them is that they automatically get you to track all relevant branches and also uh, track and update uh, all the relevant branches and also create local copies of, of all, all the relevant branches. So if you do JIT clone, you would only get master branch if you do GBP clone, you get get the upstream and local copies of the upstream and packaging branches as well. Uh, some few patches of these I made are not still upstream, but basically they're identical to the Debian side. Then to the build package tool itself. So uh, it's a helper tool doesn't actually build anything itself. So it prepares the s sources and packaging data for an external builder tool to really build the package. Well, in the simplest case, it would be RPM build, for example. Or then, in a federal case, from the previous uh, presentation, you could have a um, mock builder script, for example, so that uh, JIT build package prepare the sources for mock and then just calls mock and it, it will really build 
build the package. So uh, it's basically for exporting, building, and, and tagging the releases or, or packages. It has like several phases uh, in the process. So there's a clean phase that, uh, well, all of the phases are optional, optional actually, so you can skip any of those basically. But there's optional clean phase where you, with, with which you can like cl clean the build area. Uh, then there is export phase with which uh, uh, exports the or analyzes the version you want to build, copies the uh, packaging files spec and so on into the build area, creates a source tarball for you, copies that to the build area as well, and generates possibly generates patches. Uh, copies and copies those to the build area as well, and then then the export phase is ready. Then finally, it calls calls the builder script, which does the actual building. So, this build package uh, it outsources building, always outsources it to somebody else, and then finally, as optionally, you can tag tag the commit that you built. It has many, many configurations, configuration options for different kind of things. First of all, what you want to build, which revision, uh, options for source tarball generation, how to generate that, which version to generate it from pristine tar, some tag, branch, head, or whatever. Uh, then many options for automatic patch generation. You can uh, Exclude some patch or some exclude some commits, uh, patch compression, and so on. Also, many options for tagging, tag format, signing tags, uh, and then it has many hook options that you can run hooks after each each of these uh, phases of the build. So you can, for example. After exporting the sources, you can run some external script that will still do some modifications to the sources before building, calling some make file, whatever. And the picture here tries to illustrate what happens. So we had our JIT uh, repository here, two branches, upstream and packaging. Packaging. Uh, it basically takes the uh, looks if you build the tip of the packaging branch, takes the spec file from there, uh, copies it to the build area, and uh, generates tarball from the from the tip of the up or correct version of the upstream branch, and then generates patches from from the upstream. Of the uh, head of the upstream branch uh, to the head of the packaging branch. So here you would have like source code commits in the packaging branch, and it would generate one patch per JIT commit. And after that is f finalized, it would call RPM build, which would build the package in the build area, and finally RPM build will uh, give you the source RPM and RPM packages. So I guess at this point I could give a short demo demo about the, about the tool set so that you get some impression how it works. So I've just copied one package from OpenSUSE, random package JetLib, uh, one, two, five, and release 8.1. And then I also fetched one one or next next upstream upstream version of the of the package. So let's start with uh, importing the package uh, JIT import SRPM and then just give it we want to put the packaging data into a separate directory called packaging 
and then jet ribbon. Here we go. So now it imported the JetLib pa package into a new directory called JetLib. It warns about it imports the patches and it warns because it doesn't find any other authorship information about those packages. They are just plain plain diffs without not not generated by by JIT. So now we are in the JetLib <coughs> project and here we have two branches master which is now our packaging branch and then upstream and if you look look at the contents of the package uh, branches we can see that well upstream only has one one commit which is the uh, upstream sources in one one single commit and then if we take a look at the master branch it has more commits so first of all it, it's based on on the upstream then in the first first commit uh, it basically adds all the all the packaging files into the packaging directory that I that I uh, de de defined so license file whatever there was and patches and, and spec file and so on uh, then uh, it automatically imports the patches so these are the next commits all the patches here are imported into the source tree uh, one commit per patch like this so these are the three patches and then the last commit is actually JIT build package. It removes the patches from the packaging directory and, and the spec file as well. So, for example, if we take a look at the last commit, it has removed removed uh, the patch tags and macros from the spec file. Uh, then, okay, then we can try to bump to a new version. So. I'm here uh, in the JetLib project. Let's import the new new version. To the JIT repository. It asks that that the Version number is correct. What did it do? Ah, okay. I had the wrong option here, actually. It tried to merge. Merge the, actually, the upstream. Upstream sources to the, to the packaging branch. Let's... Mm. Okay, now now it has actually imported it. So it tried to try to do a merge. You can prevent that by giving a separate option. Uh, so now we go take a look at the ten minutes. Okay, try to be quicker. So upstream, it has a new upstream version imported. And then, uh, if we want to, if we take a look at the master branch, it's still one one two five. So if we want to do a version bump, I would just do JIT rebase upstream. And well, I don't want to. Let's see all the all the patches where. We're upstreamed already, so let's squash this. And now we are rebased on the on the new upstream. And then what I need to actually here still do is edit the spec file and set the upstream version to one the two dot six so that it would be correct. Uh, where am I? 
then uh, shortly still one more tool. So there is possibility to have separate packaging branch for the packaging metadata. metadata. So uh, in this case, the packaging branch has no common history with the with the upstream branch or <coughs> and development is done on on a third branch called development or patch queue branch and then patches are uh, exported into the pack separate packaging branch branch and and the package is re released from there uh, some common features of the tools flexible branch naming, tag naming, and then pristine tar support, and well, configurable directory for the packaging files. Uh, example workflow would be said start point, clone or import the existing package, develop, test, commit, you can test, test building the package as well, and once you are satisfied, build the package with GBP, and if you want to release it, also Use the tagging feature and push to JIT server. And actually, we have one, one I could have shown it here. Uh, shortly, is actually building the package. So let's start again. So JIT import. Oh. Now I import again the old version. Then I go to JetLib and then just give it git build package and well let's build build for example in the previous directory and then rpm build pa and now what happened oops Did I do? Ah, oh, okay. That uses RPM build, and now if I take a look at the build directory, it has all the stuff it exported. Uh, the build RPM build build the package there, so you can find the RPM and RPMs and source RPM there. Uh, very shortly about the maintenance models that the tool supports. So native for native packages and two different models for non non native packages. Native is easy. You are the upstream. You only have the packaging or master branch. You can make everything there release whenever you want, and no no need for separate upstream or uh, upstream branch or any separate patches or anything. Nice and easy. Then for non-native packages, this is the like option I demoed here and uh, had in the earlier pictures. You have basically two two branches or possibly pristine tar as well. Uh, separate branch for upstream sources and then packages packaging branch, which is uh, based on the upstream branch. The bad thing in, in this model is that. Uh, when you do rebases, you lose JIT history of the packaging, packaging data. And well, but it's it's easy, it's easy to use and, and understand, easy to maintain. Then there's a second option which I shortly described with this one tool. There's so totally separate packaging branch, and then upstream. And uh, a separate development branch in which in which the like source code development is done. So in this model, you have to use the separate tools for exporting the patches into the packaging branch and commit them there. Bit more complicated probably, but then with this you can you always have a linear history in the packaging branch and can can easily see what has. What has happened there? Okay, future development. Skip the demo. Uh, 
change the lock generation is still missing. So I hope I hoped to get it here, but didn't quite make it. Uh, better support for bare repositories in order to easy, more easily use the tool in, in the backend services, for example, remote builders. Uh, then cross distro support so that you could easily use the git build package tools to maintain packages for Debian and RPM simultaneously or release for easily for Debian and RPM. And then also some ideas of sub-modules to be able to create uh, more than one ton of tarball, uh, source tarball caching. Then I had also in works an OBS source server, source service plugin that the OBS server would, could use JIT build packages to fetch, fetch the right, easily fetch the right uh, version of a package and build it. And then the name of the commands are not that nice, so I'd like to have like a nice sub command, sub command interface of GBP build and then give the and GBP import. And then the usual, I'm not that fond of all or that uh, proud of the code quality in all of the areas. So code cleanup, of course, then upstream all of all of the patches and full unit tests are also missing. Some of them are already there, but not all. I'll skip this well. If you're interested, you can find me on IRC. Uh, sources are in GitHub and documentation as well. And uh, Debian GitHub package is to find as well. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? Oh. Thank you very much. Uh, I think you went a little bit uh, quickly as regards the OBS uh, business, but this is really interesting because that could be the interesting way to um, support uh, at the same time multiple Linux distributions. So can you elaborate a little bit more on what's happening in that direction? So uh, as I said, uh, I'm, I have a, a preliminary like OBS source server plugin for for using git build package. So the idea would be, in the OBS side, idea would be to uh, use this. I don't know if you're familiar with this OBS source service. I guess you are. So to just have this one service file on the OBS side and then r run the service, and uh, then the OBS server would use git build package to fetch the correct or update the JIT or clone the JIT or fetch, fetch it. Uh -huh. uh, use JIT build package to export the, export the packaging files and source files into the OBS server and then build it from there. So it, if you want to build certain version of the package, just click and then OBS service plug plugin would han handle everything automatically. So I'm hoping to soon. Um, you said you didn't, you did not want to reinvent the wheel. Uh, yep. I noticed that uh, Fedora has been building packages from Git repositories. Uh, can you elaborate on why you do not uh, use uh, their, their existing system? Uh, I'm not actually that familiar with the, with the Fedora. Fedora style of uh, of maintaining packages in JIT, so probably well at at, the, at least at that at the, at that time I didn't like find anything that useful uh, in that direction. Probably I just missed missed then something. your roadmap, uh, do you plan to merge upstream uh, or upstream is in interested into RPM support? Yeah, the plan is to, okay. plan is, long time plan is to get everything upstream. And 
at the term, uh, it is possible to build RPM packages on Debian system using this tool? Yes, it is if you have if you have all the RPM build and everything that sure. is required. But otherwise, yeah, yes, basically if you have and the build tool. Manage both on the same uh, with the same tools. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the that's the idea. So this seems to work quite great if you have a, a source RPM to start with. Yep. Um, can you start completely native, just an upstream tarball? Get yeah, sure. Yeah, but then you have just have to write the spec file yourself. But yeah, sure. Uh, sure, but so uh, all the examples are always about importing an existing source RPM. So if you're starting to build a new package, it's hard to get started, right? Well, then then you have to write the well write the packaging from scratch. So import yeah, so, source sources or just clone the clone the upstream and yeah, of yeah. course, of course, yeah. Yeah, time's out. Thank you, guys, and ladies. <laughs>